All right, guys, I've recently been able to purchase a, a Somatic S7 1200 uh, basic starter kit. Uh, so this is 2017, and I'm looking at a Canadian site here. Um, and the price for these guys, are we in Canada? Yeah, so we're in Canada here. So the price in Canadian dollars for this guy is 868 bucks uh, for one PLC. So uh, it comes with, uh, oh, that's cool, it comes with uh, Ethernet cable, uh, the PLC, a nice carrying box, the uh, the actual Siemens programming, and then it also comes with um, this little guy right here. Let's see, can I hover it over that? No. So you can see just in front of uh, the PLC um, that additional thing with those the little switches there, so the little dip switches, uh, and those tie into your inputs, so that you can simulate your imp toggling your inputs. Um, and you can do any program programming that you wish and just look at your output LEDs to see uh, when they turn on. Uh, so we're, I'm looking at this and looking at uh, using the program Factory I.O. Uh, for the simulation program. Then you can tie in the Factory I.O. right into the Siemens PLC. But let's see how we can get this up and running now. So let's drop this guy down. Uh, first thing to do is open up uh, the TIA portal. I use the uh, the version 14. Uh, most people, I believe, will have 13 with them. Uh, in the box, it came with uh, version 13 and version 14 um, on a CD. Uh, so place this onto the computer, and then updating the uh, the software actually took forever. So I'm not sure whether it was just my computer um, or just my luck, but it took a long time to update um, this program. Now it seems to be working fine. Okay, so we're opening up a TIA portal, and TIA stands for a Totally Integrated Automation. Uh, but it looks like a pretty cool uh, program in that it looks like uh, your drives, your PLCs, and your HMIs are all programmed using this same software. Okay, next thing that we're going to uh, do is we're going to create a new project. So we're going to click on this bad boy right here. Okay, then we're going to name it. So we'll just Call this uh, test, and we're going to do a three wire. So we'll do a three wire project. Okay, and then the next thing to do is to hit uh, create. So again, I went to create new project, then I gave it a name, and I'm going to create. Okay, you can also see where it's leaving this program as well. So you can do like a screenshot and write down exactly where it's saving each of your programs. Okay, now that we're in here, um, we now have to go to do these kind of first steps here. So we can do configure a device, and then we're going to write our PLC program. So the next thing we need to do is uh, configure a device. So this bad boy right here. So we'll click that. Okay, and we're going to add a new device, seeing as this is the first time we're using this with our PLC. So we'll click on this guy. Okay, and then our controller, my controller is an S7-1200, uh, but you can see how many uh, variations there are. So you click on here, so I right-clicked on Somatic S7-1200. Now I'm going to right-click on CPU, and look at all the different variations that are of the S7-1200. Now specifically, I have the 1212C AC-DC Relay. So where is that guy? 1212C AC-DC Relay. Okay, so I have this guy right here. And if I open this guy up, it has a number of other options here. And mine is the 6E S7 212 1BE uh, 40 OXBO. So this guy right here. So I can specifically choose this guy. Uh, but in watching a number of videos, you can just go down here and go to an unspecified uh, CPU. So again, you can specifically find your controller. Or you can just go here to unspecified CPU, okay, and then just choose this guy right here. There we go. And we're going to add this guy in. Come on. There we go. So I have to left click on it. I was banging on the right. I have to left click on that, and that will add this guy. And I've, it looks like it's already chosen to open the device view next. Okay, so now that we're in device view, we can go here, and because right now we have like an unspecified CPU. 
and we want to see the exact CPU that we're connected to. So let's connect up here by hitting detect. Okay, and so we're going to use this Profinet, and then I'm using the Surface Pro, so I'm going to use that Surface uh, Ethernet adapter. Okay, and then we're going to start the search, and it tones out and sees what's connected to the computer here. Now, I've tried connecting the Ethernet cable right into the back of my laptop, um, and it was able to see the PLC, but it wasn't able to detect it and bring it into uh, the portal. So I've done some donkey move to not, not allow me to do that because I've seen in all the pictures, you're able to do the Ethernet right to the back of your uh, your laptop. So right now I'm connected into my router and then from the router, I'm connected into the PLC. And that seems to be at this moment, the only way that I can bring it into my portal. So right now it has uh, the IP address. This will most likely not be set up if you're doing it initially. I've done been fooling around with this and I've already put in an, an IP address. So our next step is we're going to take this PLC and then left click on detect and that should bring it into the portal here. Okay, so taking some time and then hopefully there should be an image right here of my step seven. Ah, yes, there we go. Okay, so um, if we want to see this a little bit uh, larger, then we can zoom in. So where's the, here we go, there's the zoom right there. So let's zoom in. There we go. Okay. And as we're zooming in, now let's just drop this down a touch. Then we can see all the, there we go. We can see all of our inputs here, right? So it looks like I have uh, eight inputs here. And then I've got my outputs on the bottom. So I have six outputs on the bottom there, matching with uh, exactly the PLC that I have. Excellent. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we'll double check that IP address. Okay, so if that IP address has not been made yet, you can go here to your Ethernet image, double click on that guy, and then we're already here on Ethernet addresses. And if I scroll down here a touch, um, then I can change the Ethernet address sorry, the IP address, uh, I can change the submat mask if I want to as well. Um, that IP address is cool with me, I'm just working at home. Um, so I'll leave it like that. But if you need to change it, you could change it there and it changes it instantly. Excellent. Okay, there's one other way that we can double check our IP address. Okay, so the other way you can double check is to go back to the, um, the place where we were just before this. So if we go here and hover over accessible devices, and then uh, left click on that guy. Then again, we can start the search. It'll show us exactly what's connected in. And there's our IP address. Okay, so two ways you can do that. You can do accessible devices, um, or you can go um, down here to your ethernet address and then be able to change that ethernet address on the fly. Okay, so let's drop this guy down. There we go. And the next thing we're going to do, um, now that we are connected into the PLC, we're going to go to the program block. So we're going to hover over this guy, the program box. We're going to right, looks like left click is the way to go here. I always feel like right click is the way to go, but on this Siemens program, left click opens everything up. So left click on this and then your main programming window, similar to like LAD2 and the Allen Bradley would be right here. They call it the OB1. Okay, come on. You can obviously rename it. We have to double click. There we go. And that should bring up our programming image here. Nice. There we go. So there's our first rung here. And let's just do a simple uh, circuit. Let's just do a three wire. So we're going to grab. Now look, they, they label these guys the exact same as the telemechanique. So different than the... Um, the Allen Bradley, where the Allen Bradley had XIC and XIO, these guys use the uh, normally open contact and normally closed contact. So those are their names for the XIC and the XIO. Okay, but similar to Allen Bradley, you just grab this guy, bring it down until you see green, let her go, 
and then that drops in our first device there and so that'll be my stop and I'm going to drop in my start push button there we go then I need to do um, a parallel circuit so I'm going to go right here and go in parallel and I'm going to drop in an examine if closed over here so I'm waiting to see green whoops easy now Take that and put that over there. Let's see if we can just move that over. Come on. There we go. Okay. Let's get rid of that. And let's see if we can bring this up to... Ah, oh, yes. There we go. Okay. Beauty. So now we've got our stop, our start, our holding contact, and then we'll drop in our output. Very nice. Okay. Now, I can just... This program is really cool. I like it so far. Um... You can label these guys stop. I can label this guy start. And I can label this uh, as my coil. And obviously label this guy as the coil as well. And right now we're in um, our programming uh, block right here, right? In the main OB1. Uh, but we want to go and look at our device view as well. So how do we get to the device view? Let's see if we click over here to PLC1. Okay, so PLC1 is here. And let's go over here. And I'm just, so I'm coming up to, into the top right-hand corner and I'm going to float that image. There we go. And then I'm just gonna make this a little bit more tight and bring this guy over a touch easy now. Okay, let's just bring this over like this. Very nice. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, and then bear with me. I'm just trying to get the PLC centered here. There we go. Okay, so my PLC is there. Uh, and then I can drop this guy right about there is nice. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to address each of these guys. So let's see, I'm going to grab this guy right here, the stop, and I'm going to hover over here. And then I'm hovering over my first input, percent input 0.0. .0. I'm going to drop that guy in there. Ooh, that's nice. That's really cool. So see what I'm doing? I'm taking my start now. I'm going to, it says my tag start is not defined yet, but I can literally just grab this, bring it over here, and hover over my next input. Um, you might just be able to make out that it's at percent input 0 0.1. So I'm using the left mouse button. I'm hovering over here. I'm going to let go of the left mouse button. And as soon as I do that, look at that. It's labeled this guy stop, my input 0, and my input 1 is my start. Very cool. Okay. I want this to be an output. Um, so I can do this. I can grab this and bring it over. Right. And as soon as I drop that in there, then it provides me with my output there, uh, but then takes away the fact that I called it um, my coil. I'm going to rename, easy now, I'm going to rename that uh, coil there. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so there must be a way that you can, um, that you can label that as, uh, as coil. Now I've buggered it. What have I done here? Okay, so let's hover over here, drop that in there. No. Give me two seconds. I screwed it up. I don't know. Mess myself up somehow. I'm going to grab this, bring this over. Okay. Label that as percent Q0.0. .0. So again, it's similar to the telemechanique. And now I'm just going to double click on this guy because I'm losing my patience. And I'm going to label this guy as coil. Hit OK. Ah, yes. There we go. Okay. Nice. Look at that. As soon as I change this one right here, then this one changed right away. Very nice. So now we've got our three wire connected up here, right? We've got an examine of closed, an examine of closed. We've got an output. We're just going to do an open loop in that we're just going to look at uh, the data table for this guy. And when this is a one, right, when this turns on, this will be a one. We're examining that it's a one and providing another path of logic to keep that bad boy on. Okay. Now that we've got this in with our three wire, we need to download this to our PLC. Okay, so what I'd like to do first is, uh, let's see, download to device. There should be something that says uh, compile here. Let me see if I can find it. 
So right beside download to device is this bad boy right here, compile. So we're going to click on this. There we go. So left clicking here, compiling the main OB1. Uh, and this is like a verification of your program, right? So it looks like everything was cool. Compiling finished. Error zero, warnings zero, which is always a good thing. Okay, so now let's download this to the PLC. So we're going here to download to device. Left clicking on that guy. Okay, CPU contain changes that cannot automatically sync. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, um, here where it says stop modules, um, they're asking you to uh, stop everything. Okay, different project version, uh, upgrade target device. Okay, sure. Okay, and then we're going to go here and we're going to hit load. So it's going to take some time, but it happens uh, really fast. Okay, uh, and it's saying to start modules after downloading to device. Sounds like a plan. So we're going to hit finish. There we go. And uh, similar to the Alan Bradley, this guy doesn't go live right away. So in order to view exactly what's going on with the PLC, because we don't see any green lines anywhere saying that we're actually talking to it. So let's come over here and we're going to find monitors. So monitoring on and off. We're going to left click on that guy. There we go. So now we've got a green check mark here. We are talking to this guy and we're connected into the PLC. And you can see that this is connected into the stop push button. Now I have all of my uh, push buttons open right now. So I'm going to close the stop push button right now. Okay, so again, I'll close this uh, stop push button. There we go. So you can see that as I change my stop push button, then it changes real time on the screen here. And then all I need to do is now close my start push button and that will turn on my control relay. Oh, very nice. Okay. And my output just turned on. Now I'm going to open up my start push button, but I should have another path of logic down here. Oh, very cool. So my output is still fired on on my PLC here. And now I'll hit the stop switch and that should kick out everything. Very cool. Okay. So the stop push button is now closed. Start push button is closed, energizing my control relay, turning my output on. I will now let go of my start push button. And then in order to interrupt this, I'll just open up my stop push button. There we go. And that turns off my control relay. All right, guys, that gives us a quick synopsis on how to get the TIA up and running, drop in a simple program here, like a three wire, download it to the PLC, and then be able to see it change real time in front of you. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. Hopefully that helped you out, and hopefully, hopefully you were able to get your PLC up and running. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.